and they're going to be able to attest to the fact that they did send this. Most of the time it's not going to be necessary, but if, they, if, it, if it does become necessary, they're going to be your witness. So you have somebody else do it for you who's not a party to the case. And when you send this in certified mail and the post office proves that they delivered it, now the documents are, you know, judged delivered. Somebody has a hard time getting out of saying that I never received it or I received an empty folder because the certified mail sticker shows that I did get it, but the document, there was nothing in the envelope that I got. It was empty. This way you have a witness to certify that there was something in the document. Most times you will submit an affidavit and a self-executing contract. And then the ball is in their court, and if they fail to respond, they lose. Documentation is everything. It is your proof that something was presented, and there was no rebuttal, or there was, or there was rebuttal, but it wasn't complete, and it didn't uh, conform to the terms of the contract you sent. Go to the post office and uh, 20 green certified mail stickers and 10 registered mail stickers. Go to Costco and get a big box of envelopes and a box of 8 by 8.5 by 11 manila folders. You will need to make copies and have a computer and a printer. Costco has cheap printer scanners, or better yet, get a used HP laser copier. Each time you make a document up, you will have to go to make copies for your records. And as you will send the original wet ink signed documents to the court or to the opposition parties, you will have to get a friend who is, a, who is not a party to the case to fill out the information on the proof of service and name the documents and put them in the mail. The friend can then be called as a witness to testify to providing the proof of service. Sending documents mailed to a disinterested third party by a disinterested third party and sent certified mail is a powerful tool to provide proof. You can go online to US Postal Service, USPS.com backslash shipping backslash track and confirm to get a printout showing exactly when the documents were delivered. And then you have, you have uh, a person who swears they put your documents in the envelope and you've got the US Postal Service showing that they delivered the envelope. I don't know what they could say that they never got it at that point, but I'm sure they could try. So now let's give examples of the kind of things you can do to get administrative remedy. First, administrative remedy is different from court judged remedy. You are going to settle your differences by getting some kind of agreement through letter writing. Let's use a traffic ticket as an example. First, I get a ticket for not coming to a complete stop at a stop sign. The policeman hands me the ticket. I sign the ticket with the wording, without prejudice, by, colon, John Doe, with U backslash D. Now, under the UCC, I have reserved all my common law rights and have not voluntarily entered into a contract to perform the, quote, I promise to appear in court, quote, because without prejudice reserves all your rights. If I don't appear, I can't be charged with a failure to appear, which is really a failure to rebut the accusation. Or in other words, I am guilty by failing to speak. The judge can still order me to appear and answer the charges, but if he fails to do that, he technically has no case against me. Under, next, under the UCC, within three days or 72 hours, I can rescind any contract I volunteered into, so I'm going to send a copy, the yellow copy of the ticket, back to the court with the words, quote, refused for cause, written across the ticket diagonally on the ticket, per UCC 1-308. And then make a copy of this for my records. I will also include an affidavit stating that I, John Doe, sui juris, being duly sworn, do depose and say that one, I believe I have a right to travel in my personal car with guests as long as I am not engaged in commerce or being paid upon the public right of way, and I don't believe any evidence to the contrary exists. Two, the Constitution of the Republic of California states. 
the judicial power of this state is vested in the Supreme Court, Courts of Appeal, and Superior Courts, all of which are courts of record. Three, I believe a court of record is a judicial tribunal having attributes and exercising functions independently of the person of the magistrate, generally designed to hold it, and proceeding according to the course of common law its acts and proceedings being enrolled for a perpetual memorial, Jones versus Jones. And this is off of Black's Law, page 426. And no evidence to the contrary exists. So what am I doing here? I'm making statements on an affidavit that are personal. This is what I believe, and this is my experience. And if for you to rebut that, for the court to rebut that, they're going to have to show evidence that it's not true. And if they fail to rebut that, then they lose, right? Because that's the rules of court. Five, I believe under common law, I believe under common law, unless I have injured a flesh and blood party, I have no liability to any party and no evidence to the contrary exists. Six, I believe I have not injured any party in the matter of traffic ticket number 1283872 and none exists. That's just a fictitious number. Seven, I believe I have the right to claim sovereignty as evidenced by the Supreme Court case that states at the revolution the sovereignty devolved on the people. And I continue to quote it, and then I say, and no evidence to the contrary exists. Furthermore, I say not, without prejudice, and assign my name to it and get it notarized, and then it's an affidavit. Then I have it notarized, which is what makes it an affidavit. In other words, a declaration of your experience or knowledge that has been sworn to and evidenced by the notary, repub by the notary public. If you didn't notarize it, it would still be sworn testimony, but the notary is an agent of the Secretary of State's office an official agent of the state. When the notary writes in their journal, that becomes recorded evidence, like if you went to the county recorder's office and recorded a deed to put it in the public record. Now let's discuss the conditional acceptance declaration. The other side has sent you a demand, request, or order, and we think of this as a new offer to contract from someone we are already in contract with. So it would be a dishonor to ignore it, and we would suffer the consequences of failure to speak. It would be a dishonor to argue about it, but it would be honorable to obey it, and it would be honorable to accept it upon certain conditions or to do a conditional acceptance. Let's continue with the traffic ticket example. In addition to the affidavit, we will send a conditional acceptance that I would say, Quote, I, John Doe, sui juris, accept your presentment ticket number such and such upon proof of claim that I am liable for this alleged action. Sui juris is a level of status, by the way. It declares you are over the age of majority, or 18 years, and of sound mind and can handle your own affairs as a free man or free woman. I will require the district attorney's office and or the Wonderland Superior Court to demonstrate the factual basis in law for any liability on my part to perform as the recipient of the noted ticket. Your failure to rebut my affidavit of John Doe point by point with factual evidence dated January 15, 2010, and this conditional acceptance point for point with the factual lawful evidence of liability within 21 calendar days from the time of receipt of this notice will be tacit agreement and silent acquiescence to the truth contained in said documents and result in the court and district attorney abandoning any claim in this matter and result in an estoppel against the court and the district attorney from proceeding in any action against John Doe or John Doe in all capital letters in this matter. Then sign it without prejudice by John Doe, authorized representative, and put a three cent stamp in the upper right hand corner and sign your name through it and date it. Signing your name through the stamp cancels it and makes you the Postmaster General. The UPU is an international treaty that the United States is a signatory to and results in the contract coming into international jurisdiction and proves you, the signer, are a flesh and blood person, as corporations can't sign their names because they have no hands and they have no minds. So how could they sign across a stamp? Now get a proof of service and send it to the send 
this and the affidavit and the copy of your ticket off to the DA and a copy to the court, certified mail.